everybody and welcome to the Mortgage Coach Tuesday interview. My name is Dave Savage, CEO of Mortgage Coach. We are so proud to serve the mortgage industry, uh, proud of this that 34% of America's top 1% use Mortgage Coach, proud that we're touching millions of families when they're looking to make a mortgage decision, try to understand their option. In this picture it's a rent versus own, but whether it's a rent versus own or whether they're moving up, uh, we want to help them make a confident decision. So every Tuesday we do these interviews. I bring in people that are just incredible. Uh, I do want to at least make sure everybody is aware of the, the post that I made over the weekend of the most viewed and most watched interviews of 2016. Make sure you check that out. Also, uh, you know, it's such an honor to have Steve Harney. Steve graced us throughout 2016 with so much amazing insight and value. He's going to help open the call with his insights and predictions. Uh, what led to this call is I was talking to Steve, just catching up with him a few weeks ago, and he was telling me how some of the, you know, the elite and some of the biggest players in the real estate industry were bringing him in for these predictions. And I'm like, Steve, would you, you know, pretty much replay this conversation we just had for the mortgage coach community? And Steve's like, absolutely. So here we are today, Steve, and thanks for making time to, to provide this briefing. Hey, Dave, it's always an honor to do anything with you and mortgage coach and with your you know, the people that are uh, on your team because um, they're the best in the industry. There's no question about that. Um, you know, they invest in themselves. They invest in their realtor partners. So it's an honor just to be here today. Well, I'm excited about it. And then I, I am interviewing Brad Roach for the first time. So Brad and I have been talking for a couple of years. Uh, he's, I don't want to say brand new to the mortgage coach community because he's used mortgage coach, but he's, you know, he's starting to use it. Or not starting, he's using it much more aggressively, and so Brad is going to do his first interview in the mortgage coach community. So, Brad, welcome to the call. Look forward to having you share your story in a few minutes. Thank you very much. Honored to be here as well. Good. Well, I'm looking forward to it. So, a couple reminders before I hand it off to Steve for his keynote. Uh, last week's call with Kristen Messerly, where she went through her mobile app review, was incredible. Uh, we did leave it as a handout. So, in the handout section, there's her mobile app, which she thinks are the, the top apps for home buyers and realtors. I thought it was incredible. Uh, the week before, we my interview with um, Chris Smith was incredible. I mean, the guy knocked it out of the park, uh, really making it so clear how Facebook needs to be part of everybody's strategy. You know, he showed us some stats that were, you know, mind-boggling to me when you really think Facebook is the Internet. And, and when you look at Facebook compared to the influence of other social mediums, Facebook is just where it's at for, for realtors and families right now uh, that are getting into debt. And then he, he went as far as to, to just help us make better posts and use Facebook as a better strategic marketing and sales tool. So if, if you missed that call, I so recommend that you go back and listen to it. It was just a week or two ago. And it's, it's being watched and shared so much. I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes one of the most viewed um, recordings of 2016. It's definitely trending that way. So like I said, if you missed it, go back and check it out. So with, with no further ado, I'm going to bring Steve Harney in. He's going to provide us with the keynote with his predictions. If you do have questions for Steve, feel free to submit those throughout the conversation. I will be keeping an eye on the, the question and answer session. And I'll either one, be bringing him into the conversation, and then two, Steve is dedicated to our community, so we'll be bringing him back. And if we don't get those questions answered today, we'll get them answered one way or the other. Steve, we look forward to hearing your predictions. All right, I so assume you see my screen up, and there's no challenge with that. I see your screen. You sound great. All right. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted, uh, as uh, Dave already mentioned, uh, you know, this time of year, we, you know, a lot of the great uh, thought leaders in, in the real estate industry get together and they try to figure out, you know, actually it's a couple, maybe 60 days ago, try to figure out, you know, what is 2017 going to bring? And up until November 7th, most of them were pretty sure that 2017 was probably going to be the best year we had since 2006. They weren't sure if we were going to do the numbers we did in 2006, but they thought there was that much opportunity there, meaning they really thought that the market had fully recovered and that 2017 was going to be almost a breakout year. As good as 2016 was, um, when I was talking to the broker owners uh, just 60 days ago, a little bit more than 50 days ago, all they were talking about was expansion. They were going to be purchasing companies. They were going to be expanding into markets. They were hiring more people. 
I've never seen that much optimism on the real estate side of it than I did, um, than I have seen in 10 years. Uh, and a lot of that, that, that optimism came from the fact that one after another of the 2017 um, uh, projections that were coming out from whether it be First American, whether it be Calculated Risk, whether it be Realtor.com or Zillow or Trulia, they all came out with their projections of what 2017 was going to be like and one was just better than the next. So we're really looking for with, with um, household um, tr household formations dr dramatically increasing, with um, the job market getting better, with incomes getting better. Uh, everything was really lining itself up. And then election day came. Now this is not a, po a political call. This is not anything about politics. But up until that point, everyone was pretty solid that we knew for a fact without any question that Clinton was going to win. So everything was baked in based on that. And then the worst thing that can happen to an industry occurred, uncertainty. I'm not saying that one person getting elected over the other person would have had that much difference, except for the fact we were already certain which one was going to get elected, and that changed on a dime. One of the greatest upsets in American political history. And that sent everything reeling a little bit. Because now they're saying, all right, let's, we now have to readjust. And in that readjustment period, there was some um, concern, some uh, fear almost, in some of those same brokers. They saying, well, wait a second. Once they settled down and they said, well, wait, this is a guy that's a real estate guy. Wait, 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 this is a guy that's going to grow the economy. Wait, this is a guy that's going to march us forward. forward. All of a sudden, all that same optimism came back. However, now we have to wor worry about not the real estate people that are very, very, very optimistic about what's taking, pl taking place over the next 18 months, not just 2017, but going into 2018. We have to be worried about all those other people that didn't handle the uncertainty as well. And it was two different things that happened. Number one is we had a new president, and the second thing that took place was interest rates changed. And we can see just on this graph right here, that rates had been dropping throughout the year all the way up to the election. Now, you're smart enough, anyone on this call, most loan officers, but every single mortgage coach person, understands that, all right, well, if the economy is getting better, you know, that's going to affect the bond market. If it affects the bond market, that's going to affect interest rates. And in a way, this is really good news because it's really reflecting a much better economy. We know that. There are some people that write even in the financial journals that still don't have that figured out. There are a lot of consumers that have no clue what that means. And even some realtors, many realtors that don't know what that means. So there were certain headlines, headlines you know, that, that were political. Saying the result of the presidency, your mortgage just went up. All right? You know, Trump caused your mortgage to go up. And all that type of situation there, and I apologize for that, all that type of situation there started a concern. What I want to make sure that everybody in this call understands is we just have to fight that initial concern in the first 90 days. 2017, all those projections are going to come true. It's going to be the best year we had since 2006. I had did a maybe, it was maybe four nights ago, with two of the biggest brokers in the country together at the same table. And they were almost combating each other on how much optimism there was. One of them even picked up the bill, which hadn't happened in a couple of years when I went out to dinner with people. So we, we were in a situation that there, there's a real, real, real positiveness going. But we have to battle the concerns about the uncertainty of the new administration and the uncertainty about what the rise in interest rates mean. Now, probably the best quote I saw in regard to interest rates came from HSH, a company you're probably familiar with. They look at interest rates all across the country. The rise in rates was considerable, was considerable, but no one should be all that alarmed nor fear that the housing market will come to any kind of abrupt standstill. After all, rates were only about where they began in 2016, and all expectations at that time were that the housing market would be doing fine. It also bears remembering that many long-range forecasts thought that mortgage rates would be well above even those levels by this time. Now, so what you, I want you to say to your clients is, I want you to say, listen, I know rates are up a bit. I know you were hoping to get a sub-4 interest rate, and now maybe you're not. But you know what? We're still in a really historically low interest rate right now. 
All right, and if we take a look, but you have to back it up with facts. So if they're saying that what projections were, they would be even higher than they are right now, you have to back that up. I want you to see where it says that all the way at the bottom. December 2015. This was the projections last year at this time by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the Mortgage Bank Association, and the National Association of Realtors. Where they thought interest rates were going to be, if you look along the bottom line in the fourth quarter. Fannie Mae hit it right on the head. But the other three all projected that interest rates would be much higher than they are right now. As a matter of fact, if you average them all out, including Fannie Mae, we can see it was 4.6%, a half a point higher than where they are now from the Freddie Mac standpoint. So I want everyone to feel comfortable with the fact that even though rates are going up, this is not something we haven't been prepared for already. The shock of them going up as quickly as they did will cause, again, some concern, some uncertainty. It's up to us to battle that. Now, the great news is, you know, the, the mortgage coach people, you understand this better than anyone. But remember, the people that are given the most have the most responsibility. It's our responsibility. It's the responsibility of the real estate people that I'm in front of to make sure that the consumer is comfortable that, yeah, rates are ticking up a little bit, but you know what? It's not going to have a. It's not going to cause the market to come to a screeching halt. That's not what's going to take place. Now people always say, "Well, what is Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Mortgage Bank Association not projecting right now?" The last set of projections, I don't even want to give you because they're all below where the rates are actually up right now. So we'll have to go ahead and get involved in that. Now the big question is, what is it going to have as far as home prices are concerned? All right. Because some people are saying, and there's some report out there, and again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to make sure that the first 90 days, we take away the concern and let the market do what it's going to do, explode. But it won't explode if we don't battle the concerns. So some people are saying, well, with increased interest rates, home prices have to come down. And intuitively, that makes sense. Well, if there's less people that can afford a house because rates are going up, then that means that's going to cut back on demand. If demand is cut back and, and supply remains the same, prices would have to come down. What that intuition doesn't really put, take into play is, what's the first thing that happens when rates go up? A whole bunch of people that were on the fence jump off the fence and get into the market. It actually drives demand. And again, I don't like saying anything without proving it. Here are the four times that interest rates have dramatically increased over the last four decades. The blue across the top are the timelines and what the interest rates were at the beginning of that uh, period and what they were at the end. So you can see in the first one as an example, interest rates went up about 2% from May 1983 to July 1984. Down at the bottom, I give you what happened to home prices during that same, those same periods of time. So prices didn't decrease because interest rates went up. Actually, they increased. And if we think about that logically, well, again, there's a whole bunch of people coming off the fence. And why do rates go up? Because the overall economy is much stronger. If jobs are strong and wages for the first time in a long time look like they're coming back in a, in a, in a meaningful way, well, then rates start to tick up. If rates start to tick up because the economy is really good and rates start to tick up causing a new demand in the market, guess what happens? Prices go up. Now, I don't like to take one particular group, you know, what they think about prices. But I want every because, you know, one person might say this, one person might say that. My team back at um, Bridge Builders likes to really concentrate on the Home Price Expectation Survey. It's a quarterly survey, a nationwide panel of over 100 economists, real estate experts, and investment and market strategists. They survey them once a quarter and say, where are prices going to be over the next five years? Now, the reason for them doing it that way was pretty simple. All right? It's a, almost like a mathematical formula. If I put a you know, big jar of jelly beans in front of an audience of 100 people and ask them to guess how many beans were in the jar, well, a group of them would guess way too low, a group of them would guess way too high. And, but if we average them all together, the way too high, the way too low, and the people in the middle, we'd come very close to the number of beans in that jar. So same thing here. A hot, they surveyed 111 people just a couple of weeks ago. This broke last week, maybe 10 days ago. This is what the experts are saying 
right now, after the election, after interest rate going, this is what's going to happen to prices moving forward. And again, it's not just one person's opinion. It's an average of all 111 experts. Here's the cumulative home appreciation by 2021. What we can see, ladies and gentlemen, is the bowls, the top quarter, the top 25% of the total survey, think prices are going to be up over 30% over the next five years. If we take all projections into play, they're going to be up 21.4%. But probably the column I like the most is the orange column, the bears, the most negative, the people who always see the, the glass half full. Even they think that prices are going to be up over 10% over the next five years. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the reason this is important is if people are hearing that interest rates are going to drive prices down, that might put them back up on the fence. Well, I want to buy if prices are going down by showing them a couple of things like the things I'm showing you right now. And again, all this is available to you. I gave this whole slide deck to Dave because of the respect I have for the mortgage coach people. All right? Show them this. Well, no, there's no red bars here. There are no bars showing that we're going to have depreciation. Now, appreciation is going to level off. You know, we had uh, over 5% in 2016. That's where pretty much we're going to finish up. And they're projecting that will go 4% next year and be somewhere around 3% a couple of years after that. But ladies and gentlemen, again, what the, the fear is right now, what some of the reporting is right now, well, this might put a standstill to the market. It might drive prices to negatives. No. No one who knows what they're talking about is saying that. But it's important that you not just say that because they might think you're just trying to get a mortgage. If the realtor says that, they might think the realtor is just trying to make a deal. Let's back up our opinions with facts. And let's tell them the result of those facts. Let's take an average price house in the United States, about $250,000. And let's take those last projections I just showed you and put them to the price. So if someone bought a house right now and they closed on it next month, they own it at 250. If we put on the top of that 250, just what is projected to be the appreciation by those 111 experts over the next five years, we can see that a family on a $250,000 house could actually grow their family wealth by about $43,000, a little over $43,000. Now, I know that you have some great um, um, presentation materials within Mortgage Coach. You know, your cost of waiting, and you know, Dave will you know, address that a lot better than I will. But Dave sets you up, Mortgage Coach sets you up to do this type of thinking. I want to make sure you have that in the top of your head, especially right now, because there are going to be some people jumping up on the fence because they're afraid to move forward. We have to make them more afraid of not moving forward. Because in reality, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to lose if they don't move forward then. You know what's happening in the market. You know it needs a strong economy. What advice would you give to your son and daughter? That's the same exact advice you should give to your neighbor's son and daughter. We're in a good place right now. Prices are going up. And yes, because the economy is getting better, interest rates will continue probably to end forward. But that means they should be jumping into the market right now. Now jumping away from it. CoreLogic breaks it down by state. This is not the, the Home Price Expectation Survey. But if you want to know what they forecast prices to be by state over the next year, you get a pretty good feeling in here. But again, there's no red states. There's nobody projecting, or they're not projecting, that any state is going to fall into the negative over the next year. So the people, not the, the, the pundits that got the election wrong to begin with, not the reporters, the headline writers that got everything wrong in the you know, last 60 days anyway, the people who know what they're talking about are saying, man, we're in for some 2017 on the real estate side. And you're going to definitely get that client that's going to say to you, well, listen, you know, my brother-in-law got a house, you know, bought a house six months ago and he got a 3.4% interest rate. Why do I have to pay 4.5? Here's the answer I want you to give to that person. Your brother-in-law is smarter than you are. He bought at a better time. And then giggle. They'll get it. But then finish that giggle with this slide. See, according to Freddie Mac, these are the historic market rates by decade. 70s, it was 8.86%. The rest you can see. 
So what you can tell them, they're not going to get the, the same deal that brother-in-law got two months ago. But they are going to get a better deal than an older brother got 10 years ago. They're going to get a better deal than their parents got 20 years ago. And they're going to get a better deal than their grandparents got 40 years ago. It's important that we back that stuff up. And sometimes when people are really concerned and they're nervous about taking the step forward, we have to show them, you know, what's going to happen if they don't move forward. That cost of waiting analysis you have is so important to you. Please, if, if a mortgage coach person is not using it right now, please start using it. And if this person on this call that's not yet a mortgage coach client, it was an invite by Dave or friends or something, get, start using mortgage coach. They give you this information in a way that you can prove to the client there's not time. Because, ladies and gentlemen, here's the alternative. That's according to the Census Bureau, the median asking rent since 1988. We know which way rents are going. We know historically which way rents have gone. Second thing I want you to think about, ladies and gentlemen, in a big way, is housing inventory. That's really our biggest challenge. If mortgage rates start to rise heading into next year, prospective buyers could face weakening affordability conditions in a market unless supply dramatically improves. We have to get the agents. We have to help our agents get more listings in the market. Now, sometimes, you know, one will say, I'm kind of interested in a mortgage. 92% of every, every person, every seller who sells their home becomes a buyer. The only difference between them and a first-time buyer, they have cash coming, a lot more cash coming to the table. And we have to help the agents find out where the move up buyers are. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we could take a look at here. In 2001, there were 1.8 um, million move-up buyers. In 2015, 2016, numbers aren't out yet. We only had half that amount. There is a pent-up selling demand right now. This is the median seller, seller tenure in a home. Americans stayed in their home for six years. That was the average for 20 years in a row. Then when things crashed, the housing market and the economy crashed, they stayed longer. Seven years, then eight years, then nine years. For the last couple of years, it's nine or ten years. But that orange block there, that's a pent-up demand that needs to come to market, and we have to help the agents get that to market. Part of the reason that people didn't uh, put the house on the market, they, were, they didn't have the equity. A lot of people were negative equity. Well, that's changed. This is the percentage by state of homeowners equity rich, meaning they have over 50% equity in their home. They don't have to stay in the house because they're locked into the house anymore. That's not true. We have to get the agents to understand that too. They don't have to stay in the house because the economy is horrible. It's gotten much better. They don't have to stay in the house because they're worried about losing their job. The job market's gotten better. Now's the time for them to start dreaming again. And we have to help them with that. But again, probably the most important thing as I end this up, probably the most important thing that we understand, crucially important to understand, that the way we start the next 90 days, the first 90 days of this year, will determine how 2017 goes. If we lack uncertainty, if we lack concern, if we lack fear and get in the way of what the market normally would do, then perception will become reality. But it's the leaders in every industry that make sure that doesn't, those type of things don't happen. I didn't jump on this call because Dave asked me to jump on this call. I jumped in this call because it was a tremendous opportunity to talk to the broad, best and brightest most professionals in the industry. Just like I'm trying to get in front of the, as many as I can of the best, best and brightest people in the real estate industry. Because now's our time to step up. Now it's our time to get on the soapbox grab a megaphone and say, don't be afraid, follow me. Let me tell you why you don't need to be afraid. Let me tell you why this is an opportunity. Because again, ladies and gentlemen, 2017 is going to speed forward. So help those people get these listings on the market right now. The number one reason for them not to wait until the spring, help your agents understand this. The supply of listings increases substantially after the new year including new construction, which lowers the demand for your house. I can't give you 2017 numbers. They haven't happened yet. 
I can give you the 2016 numbers, and every one of your agents should get this slide immediately. Because this is the same as it was in 2015, 2014. In the 30 years I've been making this slide, it looks exactly the same. In January, February, January, February, inventory levels for houses for sale are way low. Everyone waits to the spring to put the house on the market. Why should people, why would people want to wait when there's more competition? It's not like we don't have demand right now. We have, every one of you realtors has 10 buyers they can't find a house for. Let them show us the sellers and let's get a whole bunch of inventory on the market right away. And the other thing is please don't wait because new construction is projected to go up too. But going back to this slide and finishing up, I want everyone to understand that the way we start the next, the, the next 90 days or the first 90 days of 2017 will determine how successful we are at the end of 2017. The first 90 days are crucial. Whoever dominates the first 90 days on the mortgage side and the real estate side is going to dominate the rest of the year. All those projections in October didn't change on an election day. Things did change. More uncertainty came to the market. But all those other dynamics, all those other uh, projections are all still there. And if anything, we might have to up them as long as we take care of the concern that's in the market. And again, that's up to the leaders in the market to do that. Now, a couple of things on that. Then I'll finish up. You have coming up the, the better half of this call. Brad's coming in and he's going to show you how to make sure that not only did you handle your person with, you know, class, what's called and type of service, but how you do that enables you to get other people that they're talking to, other people that might be a little bit concerned, a couple of people that are climbing back up on the fence. Brad will show you how you, the way you handle your client now, you will get an increased number of referrals during the process of your current client getting it. Brad's got his stuff together on that, ladies and gentlemen. Combine what we showed you in the first half with what Brad's going to show you. Wrap that around, or most important of all, the cost of waiting analysis that you have in Mortgage Coach, and let's help these people make the right decisions for themselves and their families moving forward. That's all I have, Dave. Uh, Steve, I, that's all you have? That's pretty, pretty damn awesome, buddy. So, mm -hmm. so, folks, I mean, Steve not only came in, provided a narrative, around these insights, he gave you the slides. So everything that he walked you through, we have put in the handout section of this go to, um, go to webinar control panel. And if you are listening to the recording, we have put a link in the description in YouTube. So if you go down and look in the description of YouTube, there'll be a link to Steve's slides. So Steve, this was an incredible gift, um, not only to the mortgage coach community, but to all the families and agents that we serve. So um, super grateful for you to be here. Uh, I just, I just want to, I guess, get everybody really clear. You're a mortgage coach. So you, by, by the nature that you're on this call and by the nature that you invest in our community, you believe in advice over price. You believe in helping people make better decisions. And, and one thing we know, we know rates have gone up. That's understatable. Uh, we know that political uncertainty has created concerns. And Steve's given you a lot of insights to help um, provide clarity, help families make better decisions. The analysis that I'm hearing, because the way I see it, the mortgage coach loan officer's job, job is to help families get off the fence and into escrow when it makes sense for them. And, and, and when I talk to the, the nation's best loan officers, which I do, I, I talked to Jay Crowell yesterday because he's a great mutual client of both us and Bridge Builder. I talked to Kelly Zitlow. And I'm, I'm saying, what are, you, what are you talking to realtors about? All the best of best, they tell me the same thing. One, I'm meeting with all of my realtors in January and February. In fact, many of them are already booked solid uh, to have meetings. And, and what are they talking to them about? They're talking about, this is my experience, and this is how I'm creating urgency for your families. This is how I'm helping them understand their options. Jay Crowell was, you know, basically, I, I have a one-two punch. I show them a couple of the Bridge Builder Steve Harney slides, wherever it's relevant and tailored in the conversation. And then I, I walk them through. This is a picture of Jay in his office in Seattle. 
Uh, about 40% of his clients meet him in person, the other 40% is over the phone and the internet. And then I walk him through the cost of waiting analysis. By the way, I will put a link to Jay Crowell's cost of waiting analysis in chat. We'll also put a link to that in the, the description. So, so this is personal based off their assumptions. What do you think rates are going to do in six months if you're, if you're thinking about waiting? Where do you think your value is going to be in three months or six months? Where it's personal. It's based off their assumptions. And now it's, well, what if I bought now? What if I wait and think what rates drop? And what if I wait and it's worst case? Nothing gets better, but rates go up. And then he nets that out. You know, that's what Jay does. Kelly does the same thing. She, you know, does the same thing. Although if it's a first time home buyer, she has a whole strategy around with our rent versus own analysis where, hey, what are your assumptions? What do you think rates are going to do? What do you think values are going to do? Okay, do we buy now or do we wait? a few more months? Do you go through a couple of realtors and a couple hundred properties that you look at? Or do you what? Are you committed to the realtor you're working with? And do we literally find the right home for you over the next two to three weeks? Again, Kelly Zitlow and the best mortgage coach, they help families make great decisions based off their assumptions. They use Steve Harney and Bridge Builders, and they use Mortgage Coach to do it. So I have put a link to the Bridge Builders website in the chat. Again, I, many of you, hundreds of you are already on the Bridge Builders team. For those of you that aren't, you're, you're, you're just plain old missing out. Not only will you be smarter because you'll have access to this insight and even more than what we shared today, but you'll be able to serve your clients better. Uh, I did have a question. Um, a person asked questions like, Steve, do you provide information on a regional? Uh, you know, there was a number of questions asking for more of Steve's insights. I mean, what you got here was just him giving us a gift. The answer is yes. Steve has regional information. Uh, he has more insights than you can imagine, but those are premium, and you need to be a member of Bridge Builder Insights to have access to those. So, Steve, thank you, brother. Um, any last words of wisdom before we let you let you run? Uh, all I want to say is thank you for giving me the opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what I think of you as being bridge builder, I, you, uh, being a mortgage coach client, hopefully some, many of you are bridge builders, but a mortgage coach client, you're the best there is, and we need you to step up right now. We need you to really take a leadership role right now and move forward. And the fact that David, through mortgage coach, everything he gives you, giving you the insights we have now, and you know what's going to take place the second half of this phone call is going to blow my stuff away. So just really take everything you learned today and again, grab that band, you know, that 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 uh, soapbox, get get a megaphone, and get out there, and and let to drive this market uh, to where it should be in 2017. It's within our power to do it. Let's take that power upon us. All right, Steve. Thank you so much. So no problem. So I am so excited to interview Brad. Brad and I have talked on the phone, you know, many a times. Every time I talk to the guy, I'm like, I got to interview you. And, and so here we go. You know, Brad, welcome to the call. Uh, first of all, before I get into some interview questions for you, any, anything you want to add or anything you think we should make note of from the presentation with Steve just now? Well, thanks again for having me. Um, I can tell you Steve made me feel more comfortable, but I've been doing this for a while. So <laughs> some of the slides that, that he showed, uh, being able to use some of the facts with clients is phenomenal. And I think that's it's similar to to what we use with mortgage coach when we're talking to a client. But um, I, I did take away helping the realtor get more listings and putting some urgency because I doubt they have a lot of the slides, the ones I'm talking to, that can help them make a decision a lot quicker. Uh, just that one slide on why wait until spring. Here's here's where you have less competition. That one slide right there is a no brainer to use. And I think it's a great reason to go meet with some of these agents you're already doing business with, or some of the new ones. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no doubt. So, I mean, I mean, 2016 is going to be great. Uh, right now, I am focused on helping you guys crush it in January and February. And, and believe it or not, uh, there's some folks that are real concerned, and, and they should be concerned because if we don't bring the leadership uh, to the market, if we don't bring it to the agents, the buyers, you know, not going to be so great. So, so Brad, what, what market are you in? Tell us a little bit about your practice, a little bit about your mortgage story, and then let's unpack you know, some customer experience ideas. A quick, quick summary. I did loans in Michigan for about 18 years. Uh, we did, we're a good producer. I did uh, the core train that was in that for 10 years as one of their coaches. Um, 
moved to Charlotte, North Carolina when uh, the market sucked in 2009, 2010. Didn't know anybody, um, but it was time to make the change um, and had an offer to come open an office here. So decided with weather and uh, rough market anyway, now's a good time to do it. So we did. Um, first year we, we got here, we did about 170 loans. Um, and since then, it's it's just taken off to put us over uh, 50 million this year, real close with uh, what we've been doing. Uh, average price around 250, and a team of three, myself and two others. Love it, love it. Well, the way you got on my radar is you you spoke at Mastermind this year. I think you you had a publicist that reached out to me. I thought it was so smart. He reached out to me and said, "Hey, uh, Brad wanted to interview you. We're doing a press release." Uh, and he wanted to interview you. I can't remember the questions, but at the end of the day, you 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 put together an article that was you know posted in all kinds of newspapers. It had my quote. It had some other really uh, well-known industry leaders and, and yourself. And I'm like, that's like the smartest thing I've ever seen. Uh, so I mean, what, by the way, what was that? You know, I I just know I got the call. I agreed to be quoted. And I know that you had some type of article published all over the country. What what exactly was that? Well, that was just promoting that we were actually just going to do a talk and and with similar stuff that you were helping with and Barry Habib and a couple other guys that were there. A lot of you know, when I moved here, it was it was a lot different market. To kind of give you a, a quick quick scenario of my thought process was, I always had clients coming in and meeting with us belly to belly and. Um, you you got to build that relationship, and more times over since I've been moved for the last five years, it's it's online business. They're looking at you online. What makes you different? Um, and you really have to stand out. You know, I was interviewing a, a guy the other day as a loan officer, and through the pitch I was talking to him, um, one of the questions I said, you know, most realtors before you go meet them are going to Google you. I promise you. And then I asked him, I said, you Googled me, didn't you? And he's a 28-year-old loan officer getting rolling two years with his licenses. You bet I did. So I think that part of push, pushing yourself out there to make yourself look different is building a brand as a loan officer. And that's one of the things I really pride myself on doing is whether you're called the mortgage planner or whoever you, you deem yourself to be or that tag that you use, building a brand is huge. And having some of those things that pop up online that you can they see you um, – makes you stand out whether it's the Zillow reviews and uh, other things like that still people are googling you and they got to see some stuff that makes you step out a little bit as to what makes you different and that's what we pushed as a brand for ourselves and it I makes you it. at a different you play at a different level and that's what we're we're trying to do against other loan officers well I love it I I just googled you for those of you that are watching the screen check it out uh, you know Google Brad see how you compare Google yourself and see how you compare so now, Brad, you know, one thing that, you know, when we were doing our prep call on this, that really, uh, I don't know, it was just a different conversation. You talked about your borrower experience. You talked about some of the goals you have in terms of getting referrals while they're, you know, while they're in process with you. If you could just, you know, share that, you know, which, what, what is your goal from an experience standpoint for a client? And, and do you wait until the loan closes to start asking for referrals? Just, you know, walk us through how you think and how you approach client experience. Well, I'll tell you, um, 15 years ago, and I remember to the day one of my coaches had told me, um, when a client sits in front of you, what do you see? And I, you know, I'm paying them six, 700 bucks for a half hour, and I said, I see a client. He says, what else do you see? I, I'm, I see a client. Um, same thing, he asked again. It's kind of getting annoying because I know I'm on that hourly rate. And um, by the time he's done, he says, there's other things that you need to see are like a stallion horse running down the track with blinders on each side of you. If you take those blinders off, there's so many more opportunities sitting in front of you. And when we relocated here, it really came back to me as to, man, it's a lot easier to water what I've already got versus going out and getting new seats. So while you have to go out, and I call it before business, you got to pound on realtors, do some radio stuff, uh, run some flyers, go hit the street. The hard part that some guys either really like or, let's be honest, it, it is hard and, and it's not as fun as having a relationship that's already there. So um, I didn't have a database either. You know, relocating um, with all the licenses and stuff, it's like if I'm going to move, let's go fresh. So I did. So I didn't have a – I had to go pound the street for before business and get – people to want to do business with me and realtors and, and what have you, or 
also you could go out for after business, which is your database market, and have one. So the only piece that was there that I knew I could control heavily, and it's the big magic question, how does a guy go from eight units a month or five or whatever level you're playing at to go into 30, 35 loans? And I think it's, it's based on creating a phenomenal system during the process that one gets, it's a brand, it gets you a system, there's consistency, and you cross sell hard. And I can go through each one of those as, a, as you think about it. But if you look at the opportunities in front of you, and a lot of guys, this goes back to years ago, is you had page four of the loan app that's blank. Well, you're supposed to fill that in with who's your financial planner, your CPA, your trust attorney, your insurance agent. And we all, if you've been doing this long enough, um, you know you're supposed to. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of times we skip past it and just get that one deal and move on. Or then you go to the closing and you ask them for business and you take the little gift basket. And back a long time ago, I remember by referral only days, where they said if you get a referral during the process, you have a 60% chance of your database marketing allowing them to refer you more. If you don't get a referral during the process or before closing, it goes to 20% from your database marketing. So I know that you have to put on that experience huge for a client while they're in transaction, while they're at a peak moment of excitement, uh, talking to tons of people about the offer, uh, talking to people about the appraisal, talking about their inspection, talking about going to close, and talking about the moving truck. And when you can capture that excitement or the emotion in our deal and ask that specifically for help from the client, or their CPA financial plan or that page for the application, all of those areas, that eight deals you got in process is literally about 40 leads sitting there if you just ask or have a system in place that automatically helps tee those up for you. So I want to make sure everybody caught that. So you're saying that every client that's in escrow is worth five referrals. Is that, is that, is that the bar you're shooting at? How many referrals are you trying to get from every borrower while they're in escrow? I'm trying. I'm trying to get five, and realistically, you're going to get two or three opportunities. Okay, so let's not just call it a referral. Let's call it an opportunity. Because if I took your loan application, I asked you who your CPA financial planner is, and and a lot of it is um, for me, it was comfortable being comfortable asking those questions. So we've phrased it in a way that they can fill out a form online. Um, that's all about you for them. Uh, or just a, another label for that page for the application where you basically are, I want to make sure in this biggest investment, Mr. Jones, Mr. Client, that we have all the big players involved to make sure we put you in the right situation, have the right goals, have the right CPA, financial planner, have your money taken care of on this biggest investment you're doing. So do you have a financial planner? Let's fill this form out. And that's, where we, that's how we set the stage for instead of me trying to cross-sell it's, it's, I'm really trying to take better care of the client to make sure it's just not an H&R Block guy that's helping them fill out the uh, tax forms or that they have a CPA if we save the money on it, um, that they can put that elsewhere with a financial planner and things. So it becomes a service that we're offering to the client to make sure we involve all of them in it. Got it. So by the way, I just showed that on the screen. Uh, so we're talking three opportunities for every family you have in escrow. I want to I want to throw that back out to the community. I mean, we've got hundreds of people listening on this call right now. I want to know um, how do I ask this question? What percent of the fa people that you have in escrow are you getting a referral from while they're in escrow? You know, and if it's zero, like it never happens because I only ask for referral referrals after they close escrow. You know, I want to know just you know doesn't happen. If it happens, five percent, ten percent. Um, you know, to me, one, one thing that I think could be a super gift to everybody, huge Christmas gift to everybody, is if you just changed your standard and you said, you know what, I want to get referrals while people are in escrow. I deserve it. I am the best loan officer. I use Mortgage Coach. Everybody gets a total cost analysis, so they're obviously making a better mortgage decision. By the way, I was talking, I had lunch with a very senior executive. I mean, we're talking C-level CEO of one of the biggest um, companies in the country that thinks that about 25% of the families really pick the best loan for them. So 75% of the times family get into mortgage debt, they get the wrong loan. And so knowing that that's true, and by the way, I believe that, and knowing that that's not true with a mortgage coach client, you 
you deserve, your clients deserve for you to be referred during escrow. So I, I hope that, you know, we're 15 minutes into this conversation. we got another 15 minutes to go. I mean, if we just ended this interview right now and you get everybody on this call raised the bar on, you know what, I deserve referrals while families are in escrow, and I'm going to get opportunities and referrals while people are in escrow, and I'm going to design my process and systems to do that, I, I think that would be mind-boggling. By the way, um, just to know, Brad, the, the results we're seeing like 10%. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing, I, I'm getting some engagement. Not a lot of people are participating. No one is saying none. Um, so anyways, anything else you want to add on that piece before we kind of get into some of the other parts of your process? Well, I think that, and it kind of goes to the next part of the process, is I think um, because a lot of this is online, because they are looking you up, it's that millennial buyer or whatever you want to call it, you've got to look different to the client. We talked a little bit about that, but you also have to cross sell and create those opportunities. But you also have to have that natural obligation for the client to be able to help you. And I think that that's, it's, it's creating opportunities to be able to ask versus just coming out of the blue and saying, hey, uh, that back of the business card, the uh, best compliment I could have would be somebody refer me. I, I kind of hate that because it's, it's so nonchalant. I want reasons for them to say thank you. Appreciate you doing that. Um, give you a couple of them that we walk through is um, when a client gets pre-approved in the time of contract, they're so excited. We send a huge box of gourmet popcorn, blueberry, habanero, raspberry, weird stuff you'd never buy. But it's a huge box, eight and a half by 14 ream of paper box. It goes to the reception desk at the work, the, the wife or the husband, whoever talks the most. And it goes to their work and it says, thanks for choosing us. We know you had a lot of choices in lender. Well, they call and thank us for that. And we don't do it at closing. We, talk, we send it during the process where they're talking to so many people about that offer they just got, the excitement level. And that piece alone generates them to say thank you. And we respond, we appreciate you noticing who's the next person most likely to buy a house. We'd much rather spend our time and money on you than marketing for new business. So in turn, if you run into anybody, let us know. We'd love to help them. But think about just that, that one little popcorn. Uh, we send the crew out to mow their lawn at closing just before. That's how we introduce ourselves to the listing agent. Hey, don't be alarmed. We'll have a crew go out and mow their lawn. They leave a little door hanger. Welcome home. Thanks again for choosing us. We know you had a lot of choices in lender and realtor. Uh, but think about from another standpoint, they go online, they apply. Um, then most loan officers follow up and chase them down to call and thank them and your approvals on the email. We have online on the website, in the bottom right corner, you'll see a, a tab that they can schedule with us. So it links right to my Google calendar. There's lots of services that do this. This is schedule once is the domain name for that. Um, they can schedule a planning call with us, which sets us so hey, hey, different hey, hey, from most loan where, reps. Where is that? I'm on your website. Where is right, on, right on the home, home page. So I'm at the home page. And down right. in the bottom right corner. You'll see a schedule oh, now. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. And that's on our that's on our approval pre-qualification email that's, hey, be sure to fill out your all about you form to validate your approval and schedule your planning call. So right off the bat, we take control of it instead of chasing them down and trying to make sure we got them in the right program because they went online and a lot of them don't talk that much. And they just go do it. It's online. It's self-serve. Um, we take control of that. And when they schedule the call, uh, just like we call or, or we have a call set up at 10 o'clock in the morning or 9 o'clock in the morning, we call their cell phone right at the time and we say is now a good time for the planning call. This is where we start the process of blowing them away with Mortgage Coach. And we start going into, well, how long are you going to live in the house? Are you looking to pay? You know, that's where I start determining if they're going to pay points. Is it 15 years and no closing costs? Do we wrap the closing costs in? And we talk about the options that may best fit them. And then by 20 minutes into the call, um, that is 10 times different than any other loan officer in their initial phone call. Um, it, it absolutely blows them away. And the first part of it is just because we called them on time, and believe it or not. So if they had a 10 o'clock appointment, it texts them and says, hey, uh, your call's coming up at 10 o'clock. We call them right away. And, and that right there is, is service that has kind of gone by the wayside. And there's no phone tag. It's my schedule. Um, it's my call. I'm in control of it. And it allows me to set that stage, fill out the all about you form, structure the mortgage coach and send that to them a little video afterwards. And they respond, wow, this is awesome. I just sent one out today on a refinance. And now the guy's saving 400 bucks a month, just wrapping in some debt. And I carbon the financial planner on it. 
that's the structure. Wait till he gets his popcorn day. That the next step, and then you, you take those next steps with these clients, and you continuously are creating opportunities for them to say, wow, thanks, Brad, you didn't have to do that. That's the big piece where we close on and say, man, you know, we would love more great clients like you. Is there anybody else you know we could talk to that we could help out with or that's looking to buy in the next few months? It's creating those opportunities that makes it more comfortable for me to ask for the business versus kind of feeling like that dork and saying that the best referral is a compliment, you know? And yeah, it's so, changing the structure of how you get it. So, guys, let's, I mean, let's just walk through this because you, you're killing it. So his website's awesome. Uh, it's easy to schedule an appointment. I, I mean, I love that fact that you, 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 you and your team are so clear that just calling on time is, is, is unique. You text them before the call, so you're reminding them, so they're, they're available. That's a service. Then you're walking them through a total cost analysis, whether they're in person or over the phone. You're giving them a video. So, I mean, guys, do you see the wow? And, and now they get the popcorn and they're getting asked for referrals throughout the experience. I mean, this, I, mean I don't want to say this business is so simple, but it, but it is. It is really that simple. And, and, and I, think, you know, I think even that some of the, the top producers, because you know, we tend to have the best of the best in our community. You know, I think I, I've told you 34% of the top 1% use mortgage coach, but I'll bet everybody's not you know, um, sending that text right beforehand. And, and I'll bet you a lot of folks on this call, regardless of your success level, could be more consistent in giving the family the total cost analysis. And I'll bet some of you could be more consistent in the video. And then I'll bet everybody on this call, you know, can start thinking about, you know what, the referral game doesn't start when the loan closes. The referral starts, you know, in the first experience. And you have some very big investments and touch points during the process because I'm with you, and you know, dating back to my days as an originator, I mean, I got, I got the most referrals while they were in escrow. And then I love that number that you mentioned, that, it, it, that you're 60 more percent likely to have them as a good long-term referral source if they gave you a referral while they were in escrow. And if they didn't, you know, the odds are threefold less that they're actually going to refer you. So, so, Brad, we only got about eight minutes left. Um, there's no doubt we're going to have to have you back and do a much deeper dive, you know, dedicate a whole call to this. So a couple things, mortgage coach community, please ask Brad questions. I want to try to get a question from the community to close things out. I know you forwarded me a few things before the call that you just thought would be good to talk through. We've already shown the website. We've already shown your, you know, page five or page four. Um, what am I looking at right now? What is, what is this? This is the, uh... This is the lead tracker, uh, very similar to the core days where you in the blue beast where you're you're writing them down and stuff. We've automated on a spreadsheet that um, allows the, the key on this is one attracts leads because the system works, whether it's current client referral, past client referral, annual review, whatever it is. That system's solid. Um, what we've added to this that really has helped me, same as standing out with a client or getting that wow, is to the realtor where every week or every month we choose to send a lead report, this automatically generates a report. So if you're the referral source, Dave, your name's in that line, um, I can send you a lead report with two clicks of a button on what activity we just did this week. Most originators don't, they do once at a time. We're, we're sending reports out to them and they say, wow, this is great. Appreciate you noticing, you got anybody else I can talk to? We're creating those thank yous. And I think what, what as I even listen to myself tell you how these systems go in place, um, I think the, the disconnect that I see with a lot of people that I've coached is that like Encompass or whatever software you're using, there's milestones for submitted, approval, clear to close, whatever. As a loan officer that's marketing and branding yourself, I really believe you have to have your own milestones. So just as it comes out of underwriting, is that when you trigger the popcorn or the thank you call after closing or the mortgage coach? You have to have your system, your template, your milestones put in place, like the, they apply online, the approval goes out, they schedule a planning call, they do the all about you, then they get the mortgage coach, then they get the popcorn. That's my milestones that we've created that my team follows just like our company follows submitted to processing or underwriting. That's how that system stays in place. Love, love it. So, so by the way, I had a few people ask for Brad's form. Uh, you know, I, I just 
went through it online so you can watch the recording. I mean, it's super simple. And, and so it's, it's, it's in the recording. I love your, you know, it's so clear how you, you're, you're measuring what matters, how many apps you've taken, what your closing rate is, your submission. Uh, you know, I would just, you know, knowing next week's call is going to be um, all about insane productivity. And, you know, as most of you probably already know, we've partnered with Darren Hardy. Uh, and we've created a product called Insane Productivity for Mortgage Coach. Uh, so it's for the mortgage industry. And next week's call is just going to be all about productivity and how to be super productive and make 2017 your most efficient, most effective year. And there's a whole chapter on, you know, measuring what matters most and, you know, what are your critical three. So, Brad, what – if you only had three metrics that you were going to measure every single day, what are, and at the end of every week, you know, call it your critical three, what are those critical three for you? Total talk to's that I do every week, whether it's to a realtor client, someone who can send me business, total leads that at? came in. What's your goal on that? Total talk to's is 45. So 45 quality conversations a week. I didn't say quality. I just said 45. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a numbers guy, man. Some of them aren't as quality as you would think. So it, I, I push through the numbers to get my 45 talk to. Some turn into great conversations. Some are, you know, how's things going and they got other stuff to do. But if I know I can hit that 45 or I can hit that 110 leads that come in per month, I know I close at 35% closing ratio. I know that creates X amount of deals which once I have those in the pipeline, whether it's eight or 15, I got five more opportunities. It's a snowball. And if you start with those, that talk to number, it translates to the total leads. It translates to your co total closing percentage, which totals to your closings for that pipeline that you can create in water, like we talked about, from all the, the ways to get more business from them. I, I, I love it. Every time I ask someone that question, it, you know, they're, you know they, they quantify it in terms of prospecting time, you know, when I interviewed Jeremy Forcier, uh, by the way, his, his interview made our top 15 uh, a couple of weeks ago. I asked him what his quality is, his, his, you know, vital few were, his top three metrics. It was prospecting. It was every family gets a total cost analysis, and it was be involved in every celebration. And, and I can just tell that it's not a whole lot different with Brad. So one, one question for the community, what are your talk to's? How many people are you talking to a week? What's your goal, and how often are you hitting your goal? By the way, Brad, how often do you hit that goal of 45? Every week. Okay, so by the way. There's no, no, no question about it. It's 45. Um, if I fall behind, I'll leverage slide dial if I need to to try and catch up with some messages. But ultimately, it's, it's making sure that I, it's the, I have a form on my desk. I tick a box when I talk to them. I circle it when I leave a message. And it's 45 no matter what. And if I know I can do that with besides – all the other crap that comes with our business, whether it's locking a loan, changing it to Fannie, to Freddie, whatever, or that client to call. There's so many distractions. If that one form gets filled out, that all trickles down to what we've talked about today. So that's Love my it. main priority. Get my 45. Love it. And then where, you know, in terms of mortgage coach, where does that, I mean, I think we know where it integrates with your process. How, how valuable is that to your overall experience? It's that first, Stage. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of things seem simple or can be made simple, but when someone goes and talks to a loan officer, my competition in our area, and they do a pre call over the phone, or when they call me and I talk to them about how awesome the referral source is, direct them online, they apply, they schedule a call, they get that text, I call on time, I perform a mortgage coach. In the first 48 hours, I just crushed, hopefully, every guy around me because of those few simple things that we're doing. And Mortgage Coach is, is a big piece of that because they're sending them a cost sheet with a bunch of fees on it. We're showing them long-term based on our conversation and, and putting a little more effort in to make it valuable for them. It's a huge piece. It sets Love the it. stage. And then, then you deal with the rest of the transaction. You, you took yourself from a – I don't want to call it a car sales guy because we that kind of deems the market some. but. Um, you're either doing sales in a car lot, uh, taking deals and order taking, or you're, ha you're like an attorney with a practice. And I think that using Mortgage Coach takes you to a point of you, you're running a firm or that practice, that prestige of being excellent. You know, it's, it's a different level you're playing at. Well, hey, I want to close the call in just a minute with some actions to make sure you all know how to get trained up on how to do a cost of waiting how to have a great conversation with a realtor in January, 
Uh, Brad, if people want to connect with you afterwards, because I know you do some coaching, I know you, you, know, you not only produce, but you serve other loan officers, where would they go? How would they connect with you outside this call? Mortgageplannermarketing.com. Or you okay. can Google me. You'll find me. <laughs> Google him. <type laughs> I was him. just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you know, but, but you know, we, I put a couple links to Brad in chat, so you can just click on it directly from chat. But I, I, you know, really impressed with this guy. Looking forward to our next call um, where I interview you in more detail. Uh, I do want to shine a light on a few mortgage coach um, items. We released this mortgage coach marketing calendar, and we we're already hearing from people, hey, is it okay if I customize this and, you know, put my name on it? Guys, we made this for you. You know, these are images that our marketing team made for you. You can leverage them generically, and you can do anything you want to them. Um, anything we can do to help you present yourself as, as a cut above the average loan officer to real estate agents, we're here to help you do. So feel free to use our links on social to do that. Uh, this Thursday, we're going to focus on, this, on the um, cost of waiting analysis just because it's so important that you as a mortgage professional, when you meet with realtors, and hopefully you're meeting with all of them in January, you can let them know that, you know what, I can help your families get off the fence and into escrow. Let me show you how. And, and, and let's face it, lots of those meetings are, you know, they're in coffee shops, they're in real estate offices, or you're over the phone. Um, obviously, it's great when you can bring someone into your office and you can show them the full experience. But by the way, even when you bring them into your office, there's a mobile piece to that. You know, they should walk out of your office with your cost of waiting analysis in their pocket and purse. Or if it's a first time home buyer, they should walk out of that meeting with your rent versus own analysis. Uh, you know, this is Scott Cummings having a conversation with a realtor in a coffee shop. You know, wherever it is, we want to help you do that. So every single Wednesday, um, 11 o'clock Pacific, we are doing mobile conversations. If you have not been through this workshop, please sign up for it. You can go to our um, online calendar. Uh, hopefully everybody knows that, mortgagecoach.com forward slash calendar. But if you go to our website, you go to connect, you go to calendar, you know, don't, don't miss out on the mobile workshop. It's super important in January that you know how to have a mortgage coach conversation, you know how to have a cost of waiting conversation. We want to teach you how to do that. So check that out. One last resource, and then we're going to wrap up this call. Our team recently created this um, slide here, or this page. It's called the Total Cost Analysis. And we have a lot of example reports. So if you go to this and you want to see how one of the best loan officers in the country is having a rent versus own conversation or a cost of waiting conversation or purchase pre-qualify, you just click on the picture and now you can learn from the best. You can see an example of how one of the country's best loan officers is you know presenting options and strategies with a video. So go check that out. And with that said, I do want to push a survey poll. Um, let us know what you thought of today's call. If you are a guest and you just want to get a demo and learn more about Mortgage Coach, click the last option. By the way, Brad, people are, you know, you knocked it out of the park. You and Steve, kind of a one-two punch. Um, the majority of the people are saying we totally surpassed expectations. Any last That's words great. of wisdom from you, my friend? Go crush it, man. I got fired up just from listening to Steve, so hopefully some of the, the tools will help uh, change your approach a little bit to make you stand out. Yeah, I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, and to, to me, I hope you got two things from this. One, you know, how many talk-tos did you have this week? And, you know, how many families did you talk to? How many realtors did you talk to? And when you talked to them, did you do something more than just be an app taker? Did you, did you present a strategy? Did you use Mortgage Coach to help um, – bring their dreams and goals to reality. Have an awesome week, everybody. Have an amazing Christmas. Uh, next Tuesday, we are doing a call. It's going to be all about efficiency and productivity. Uh, so hope we see um, some of you next Tuesday. Uh, really appreciate uh, serving you guys. Have a, have a great holiday, everybody. Brad, thank you so much, brother. Thank you.